In this video, we're going to be building a really simple blog with Slim 2, which is a uh, lightweight, small PHP framework. So this is going to be really useful if you do need to build uh, an extremely simple blog. Uh, you can go ahead and adjust it later on to suit your needs, or if you want to get into Slim and, and learn how everything works. So we're going to cover most of the basics in Slim. Uh, we're not going to cover everything, but this should give you a really good starting point. So let's take a look at how the blog works. Again, it is extremely simple. Uh, on the home page here, we just have a title with posts and we have two posts, uh, both of which are just posts stored in my database. And these are linked to a user ID. So we're gonna be doing some manual SQL joins as well. We're not gonna be using an ORM like Eloquent. Uh, we're just gonna be doing all of our queries uh, essentially within our controllers. So these are linked to user ID of one uh, and that's just an account in here. So uh, when we click through onto these, you can see that we get more information here. Uh, we get the date output here. Uh, we get the full uh, body of this post and obviously the post title here. And we have a link to go back home as well. Uh, on here, this will actually truncate anything longer than a certain amount of characters. So it won't show the full post here. And obviously you can change this up as well. Now we're also going to be using uh, Twig because Slim comes with a really easy uh, package, if you like, where we can just use Twig as we like. Oh, we can use Smarty as well, uh, but my preference is Twig. So we'll be looking at doing this as well. So if you do need to learn Twig as well, this is a really good thing to get into. So what we're going to do then is we are going to start off by installing Slim, and then we're just going to get going on building this up from scratch. It's very basic, but hopefully you'll learn quite a lot from this. So we're ready to get going. Uh, you can see I have a folder here called blog, uh, which doesn't contain anything at the moment. We are starting entirely from scratch. So the first thing really to do is install Slim. And we do this by using Composer, which is a, a dependency manager for PHP. So if you don't already have Composer installed, you can go ahead and head over to getcomposer.org to download that. It works on all operating systems. So as long as you have Composer installed, you can follow along with the rest of the video. So over in Slim's documentation, which I'd highly recommend you check out if you do want to do anything more than beyond the scope of this video, uh, we have the installation instructions here. So uh, via Composer, we can just run this command. What this is going to do is it's going to require in Slim and then Slim. And we're going to uh, pull in sort of non-breaking versions, uh, uh, incremental versions here using this tilde. So we can either run this or we can create our own uh, Composer file. Let's go ahead and just run this command. So I'm going to pull up my terminal and I'm currently within the blog directory. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this. Make sure you have Composer installed. And this is just going to go ahead and generate your composer.json file. So that's going to go and add that to your composer.json file and download uh, Slim. So let's just give that a moment to complete. So now that that is done, uh, we need to look at the basics of working with Slim. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull in uh, Slim views as well. So let's start out then just by sort of structuring our project in the way that we want to work with it. Now, when you're using Slim, uh, we don't have things like controllers and models predefined for us. It's a very, very lightweight micro framework. So we're going to structure our project in a sensible way. Uh, so this actually all comes together in a way that we can separate our application nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to create a new folder called public. This is essentially where all of your style sheets, JavaScript, um, anything like that will go. And this will also include our index.php file as well. So when you are hosting this, you're going to want to have your web route set to public. And this is where your users are going to hit. Obviously, if you have a domain, they'll just go to your domain and then this will be the web route. So what we want to do in here then is go ahead and create a new file and we will name this index.php. So this is the only file in this folder. So in a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to create an app folder, and this is going to contain a start file, which is going to set up Slim for us, pull in anything we need, uh, add items to the container, for example, our database dependency, because we do need to uh, go ahead and pull items in from our database. So uh, we'll go ahead and create that app folder now. And this is also where our roots are going to be stored and our views as well. 
So let's create a new file in here and we'll call this start.php. So this is where all the magic is going to happen in terms of loading in Slim. So the first thing that we want to do is actually pull in our Composer autoloader so we actually have Slim available to us. Uh, when we ran that uh, Composer command earlier, this generated our vendor folder with uh, Slim inside of here. So all of the files in here, you can go ahead and look at the source code, which I'd highly recommend you do. Uh, but we also have this autoloader. So let's just go and require this in. We're not going to be using uh, paths. We're not storing paths in config. I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this. Uh, so we're going back a directory into the vendor folder and then we're pulling in autoload. So to create a new slim application, we give this a variable uh, or we name this using a variable and we create a new slim instance. Now this is namespaced, so we can either say slim slim here or you could go ahead and up here say something like use slim slim and then just say new slim so it's entirely uh, up to you the way that you do this just for now though, i'm just going to uh, do this all in line just so it's a little bit tidier so inside of here we have an array that we can pass uh, options to our application we're not going to be doing this just yet but we are going to be using it uh, a bit later on when we look at the views of our application which is just uh, the output that the user is going to see and we'll be pulling in twig or, or slim uh, twig in, in, in there. So the next thing to do is load in our database. So before we do that, let's just take a look at the structure of our database uh, just so you know how to go ahead and create this. So we'll start with the users table. If we just head over to the structure here, uh, we've got an ID which is the primary key of this table and it's an auto increment as well. So this will increment for every uh, record we create. So if you are creating this from scratch, uh, go ahead and add an auto increment. Uh, we have a username, which is a varchar of 255 in length. I've just left these as the defaults. Uh, we've allowed null on all of these as well. And we have a first name and a last name. It's entirely up to you what else you include in here. And then once you've got that set up in that structure, you can go ahead and just add a record in here and then make a note of the user ID. We're gonna be manually creating the records inside of our database. so. Uh, we're not going to be giving the ability to actually create these. So uh, inside of our posts table, then let's just take a look at the structure. Again, we've got an ID, which is obviously an integer. It's unsigned, a primary key, and we're auto incrementing on this as well. And we have a title, which is a varchar of 255. Again, all of these are uh, allowing null values if they haven't been entered. We have a body, which is text, so we can enter a lot more in here. That's a more suitable uh, type of column. We have a user ID, which is an integer, and we have a created, which is a timestamp. So what we can do here is if you wanted to change the date of this, you can just type now, use the now function, and that just goes ahead and gives you the current date and time. So we've now got uh, two posts in here. Go ahead and create them if you haven't already. And we've got one user, and these posts both belong to that user. So we can do a join uh, when we go ahead and pull in these records. So to actually connect to our database and our application, let's just pop a comment here. Uh, we're gonna use Slim's container to add a singleton to this. And we name this within the first argument. So this is how we're going to access uh, our database uh, instance. And then we have a closure just here. So that's it. And in here, we just return a new instance of PDO or whatever we're using to connect to our database. I'm gonna be using PDO because it's uh, pretty straightforward nice to use. So we're going to return a new PDO and then in here we're going to choose that we want a MySQL database. I'm currently using a MySQL database. We choose our host which for me is 127.0.0.1 so just local host and we choose our database name in this case it's project. If we just head over to SQL Pro you can see project up here and then we choose our username and our password. In this case for me I'm just developing locally it's root and root. So now what we want to do then is say app run. That's it. So we just say app run. And now anywhere uh, within this, as long as we've included start file, we can use app to define routes and anything else we want to do. So we now need to look at actually uh, including our routes, which are going to be basically when we say, well, I want to go home or I want to go to a particular post, uh, we can do that. And obviously public now has that index file in it. So we're not doing anything in there at the moment, uh, but that's why we're not seeing our directory listing anymore. So inside of index.php, we want to require our start file in. 
So we'll run over this in just a minute in case you're confused. But let's uh, go through the journey of hitting public and then going through. Don't worry about this too much just yet. Uh, we'll fix this up in a moment. So um, over in our public directory then, we are uh, hitting app start.php uh, or including that rather, requiring it in. In start.php, we're pulling in our autoloader so we can use slim, which we've created under this app variable. We've gone ahead and uh, created a container item, which is our database, and we've just returned a connection to our uh, database. We'll see how we use this later. And then we've said app run. Now let's take a look at a very, very simple uh, route uh, within uh, Slim, just so we can get the idea of this and we'll get rid of this 404 error. So what we do is we say app, so this can be anywhere in our project. We'll be including a roots file in a minute, which will hold all of our roots. And we say get, so we're using a get request to this uh, URL. In this case, I'm just going to do a forward slash because uh, that's just our public or our root directory. We're just showing our home page maybe. And then in here we have a closure. So anything we want to do on that page, we write in here. So what we can do is we can also say use app, which means that we can now use uh, Slim within this, which is really important. We'll see in a moment. I'm not gonna include that just yet. We'll just create a very basic example of outputting hello. And if we head over to our browser and refresh, you can see we see hello there. So that is our first route. We're defining where we want the user to land to be able to see this, and that's done. And obviously we can change this as well. So you could have forward slash home. And if we did forward slash home, we don't get anything found. Now, the reason for this is um, what's actually happening here is we don't have an HT access file to deal with anything after this being passed into our index.php file. So what we need to do is in public, create a new HT access file. If you're using Nginx, this is gonna be slightly different, but I'm using Apache. Uh, so I'm gonna create my HT access file just there. And let me just spell that correctly, HT access. And inside of here, I'm not gonna go through this because it's not entirely relevant, but you can find snippets like this online. All we're doing here is we're just routing everything through to index.php, that's it. And that way Slim's going to be able to pick up the fact that you're on a particular URL and then go ahead and route to you uh, in the right place. So when I hit enter now, we get hello. So as long as you have your HT access file in place, I'll just bring that up again so you can uh, go ahead and copy that. Uh, and you have your index.php file just in here with including your start, which we have everything here, then you're really just good to go. And we, remember we have our database connection as well. So I'm gonna get rid of this root here because we don't really want to clutter this file with all of our roots. What we're gonna do is inside of our app directory here, we're gonna create a roots folder. And inside of here, we can then uh, subcategory based on which pages this is for. So in the root of this directory, I'm going to create a new home.php file. And this is just going to contain the root for our uh, home page. So let's go ahead and do pretty much exactly what we did a minute ago. So let's say root get forward slash. That's just our root directory. And then let's just echo out home just as an example. So obviously, if we're doing things like creating a new folder for posts, and creating a new folder for admin or moderation or whatever else you have within your application, uh, this is gonna get a little bit messy. So we need to basically find a single file to include all of these roots. And if this doesn't make sense just yet, it will become clear a little bit later. So uh, just bear with this. So inside of the app directory, not the roots directory, I'm gonna create a new file that's gonna require in all the roots for my application. So I'm gonna call this roots.php and I'm going to go ahead and define uh, where or which files I want to include in. So I'm going to require in roots home.php. So we're inside of the, let's just close off this. We're inside of the app directory. Wherever we include this roots file, it's going to include roots home. And then we can go ahead and pull in posts as well if we want to. So where do we include this roots file? Well, we include it pretty much where we just created our test route a minute ago. So let's just require in roots.php. So now we shouldn't see any difference. As long as we're on our homepage here, we just see home. 
So now we've got a nice way to include all, all of the routes within our application. So this file can get pretty long, but uh, we're defining or splitting up all of our routes within these different, fold, uh, these different files and folders. So what we want to do now then is look at on our homepage showing all of the posts Within our data, uh, within our database, and then just outputting them to the user, and this is going to bring us over to working with Twig as our uh, template engine to actually show them on the page. And if you've not used Twig before, don't worry too much; it's pretty straightforward to pick up, but it gives a, a really nice way of actually working with views. So let's start doing something useful then, and actually grabbing our posts uh, from within this route. And then what we'll do is we'll slowly work our way into actually displaying these on the home page to a user. So we've already defined this route, but there's something else I'd like to add to this. And this is giving this route a name. And the reason this is useful is because when we are using Twig, uh, the package for Slim that allows us to work with Twig gives us functions like URL4, which will generate a URL by giving the name of a route. And this is really handy because it means that if you change, for example, this to home, you don't have to go through all of your application and update every single URL that you're pointing for. And this will become a lot clearer later, so bear with me if uh, this doesn't make too much sense at the moment. So after this then, all we do is we use the name method to give this a name and we just pass whatever we want to call this route in here. So home makes sense for uh, just a forward slash. So inside of here then, uh, we do need to use, remember, app db this is the uh, singleton that we attach to our container so we need to go ahead up here and say use app remember that's our variable that we have here so we can actually access db from app okay so over in home then let's go ahead and pull in all of our posts so we're going to assign uh, something to posts we're going to say app db now all of the pdo functionality that we would normally expect is within this db instance within our container so we can just say something like query and then we can go ahead and pass some sql in pull out the records and just display them in the view so in here we're going to select uh let's just go down posts dot star so everything from posts and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll leave it at that just for now and we'll select that from posts and we're going to left join the users table because remember we are storing a user ID here and we have our users table just here and we're going to do that on the posts user ID equaling the users ID so that just means that this matches up to this ID here so we're just linking that in so immediately after this we'll go ahead and fetch all records and we'll go ahead and fetch these as an associative array so we use pdo fetch asoc for associative and let's uh, just go and do a var dump on posts and then let's just kill the page there. So now we see this. So we've got first post you can see here and second post here. So it looks a little bit messy just at the moment, uh, but we'll go ahead and actually do something useful with this as well. So um, what we want to do then is where we have our user ID, we actually want to select our author's name. So just to do this, we want to concatenate Alex and Garrett together, so the first and last name. We want to output that as something like as author. So what we do here is we use the uh, MySQL concat function and we say users.firstname and then we choose comma separated list of what we want to concatenate. So last name, so this is the first name of the user, then a space, and then the surname of the user. And then we're gonna call that as author. So this is what we're calling uh, the variable so we'll just put that in an as uh, in uppercase sorry okay so now we pretty much have everything we need if we refresh now you can see author is now Alex Garrett or whichever user it is so now what we want to do is actually dive into views now there's a couple of things that we need to take into account here over on our start file uh, we are not doing uh, or we're not defining where our views are kept and we haven't even created a folder to take care of our views yet so let's just start to do this and see what happens so inside of my app folder i'm going to create a new folder called views and this is going to store all of our views so again i'm going to create a new file in here and i'm going to call this home.php and this is my 
home view. So let's go over to our route for our home and we'll just render out a view as we normally would. So we'll just say app render home.php and then in here, we uh, as a second argument, we can pass an array of data we want to send to that view. So in this case, I'm going to say posts and assign the posts we just grabbed to that uh, variable, which will become available in this home.php view. Now, the only problem here is we need to do, uh, well, initially, we might need to go ahead and say, go back a directory into this directory and find home.php because Twig, uh, sorry, Slim doesn't know where this is. So if we do refresh now, we're going to get an application error. Uh, and the message here is view cannot render home.php because the template does not exist. So what we want to do then is inside of our start file, we want to define where our views are kept. So down here, let's just create a comment for views. And we want to say view equals app view. And then from this variable just here, we can start adding any options we want to. So we're going to say view set templates directory, and then we can define that. So it's back a directory, app, and views. And that's pretty much it. So we now have set our template directory. Now when I refresh, we see the home view. So we're now rendering that home view here from this root here using this. So that's how we do views. But we don't really want to uh, go ahead and use things like for each posts as post. It's going to get a little bit messy. I want to go ahead and use Twig for this. So we need to install Slim Views. And it's just as easy as installing Slim because it's all uh, pulled through uh, using uh, Composer. So let's go ahead and run this command here. Or we could add it manually to our composer.json file if we wanted to. Uh, but let's go ahead and run this. So let's just paste that in and hit enter. And that's going to go ahead and pull this pull this down. So now this has been pulled down. Uh, we see a message here. Slim view suggests installing uh, Smarty and Twig. Uh, all this means is either or that you want to use. And we're working with Twig here. So we need to install Twig. So all we do is we go ahead and say composer install uh, sorry, Composer require Twig, and we'll let that finish. And there we go. So now we have Slim, which we've already installed. We know this. We've got Slim Views, and we've got Twig as well. So we can use Slim Views as a helper within Slim to go ahead and render Twig templates. So uh, nothing's going to have actually changed here because we haven't defined that we want to use uh, our Twig extension. So we need to do this within our start file here. Now, remember earlier I said we can pass options through to uh, Slim when we instantiate it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to choose uh, what we want to use for our views. So this is within Slim, Views, and it's just Twig. And that's pretty much it. But now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and define the parser extensions. And this is under view that we created earlier in order to set our templates directory. So all we need to do is say view parser extensions. And then we go ahead and assign an array to this. And in this case, we're going to pass in a new instance of slim views twig extension. That's pretty much it. So now when I refresh, nothing has changed still. But what this actually means is now we can use Twig within our templates. So let's just start then by building up our home page, listing through the posts that we have and just outputting them to the user. And then we'll look at creating our posts show page to actually show the post. And we'll hook these up with the URLs and everything else we need to do. So let's create a header here and just write posts in here. And now we're going to start getting into some of the Twig uh, templating. So what we want to do is we use here a, a curly bracket and we use a percentage sign, uh, much like you'd use a starting and ending PHP tag. So we're going to say if posts is empty, already looks nicer than uh, a horrible standard if statement, we're going to do something in there. 
And then what we want to do is say else, and then down here, we want to end that if statement. So if posts is empty, we are just going to output a paragraph saying no posts yet. We won't actually see this because we already have uh, some posts in our database. But otherwise, we want to loop through these. So let's go ahead and say for post in posts. All that means is it's this is similar to a for each. All we're doing is saying for each post and we're calling that post. So we now have access inside of this uh, con control structure to go ahead and output our post. So let's just start with an easy one. We'll say post title. So to output, we use curly braces like this. So we say post.title. And when we go and refresh, we see this. So first post, second post. And that's just pretty much what we are pulling through from our database. And what's really nice about uh, Twig is that we get this dot notation. So instead of having to do post title, because this is an array uh, or, or a collection of arrays, we don't have to do this. So we can just say post.title, much easier. So let's create a div just with a class of posts. We're not attaching these styles here. Uh, but we'll go ahead and create a, a header in here. We'll create an anchor. And then within here, we'll write our post title. So we have the following. And the user is going to be able to click on that. And down here, we'll have our post body. So let's go ahead and say post.body. And what we're going to do here is we're going to limit this to 50 characters. So we use these uh, square brackets. We use a colon and then the amount of characters we want to truncate it to. And then we'll have another div with a class of author. Again, you can style this if you want. And then we'll say by and then we'll say post to author. Remember, that's the uh, concatenated uh, two columns uh, we did earlier. So now that we've done this, let's just take a look at this. And it's looking pretty good. We can go ahead and click on these. They don't go anywhere at the moment. But we now have a list of our posts. So we've already learned quite a bit about the uh, Slim framework in terms of just the way it works. Uh, we've learned how we do something in here, pass it to a view. We've also named this route, which is going to really be really important when we generate the URL to go back again. But now what we want to do is we want to create a new route within posts. And this is going to be our show route to be able to show a post. So let's create a new file just in here. And we'll save this as show.php. And this is going to be um, app get. And then we'll go ahead and choose a name for this. And we'll say posts. And now what we want to do is be able to pass in a variable to this and then access it. So we can go ahead and look into our database what post we want to actually output. So in this case, it's post ID, I'll just call this. Again, we have our closure just here. And we want to use app so we can get access to our container to go ahead and query our database. Now the only difference here is how do we pick up this variable that's posted uh, via the URL? Well, all we do is we add it to here as an argument, and then we have access to this uh, inside of here. So if I just echo post ID from in here, we'll see how this works. So at the moment, we don't have links for these. We're going to add these in a little bit later. But now what I can do is say post one or post two. When I hit this, uh, oh, we get not found. So let's have a look. Oh, of course. So we haven't included it in our roots file. So we'll say roots posts show.php. Remember that's roots posts show. And when we refresh, we get one. If we add two on the end, we get two. So we now have access to this variable. So now what we can do, let's just close these off since we uh, don't need them at the moment, is we can hit our database, pull in that uh, particular record, and then we can go ahead and output it to the user. Uh, we're going to be repeating a little bit of the querying that we did earlier. This is why I would recommend you eventually use an object relational mapper uh, like Eloquent or really anything else. Uh, but we are repeating a little bit here just to warn you this probably isn't the best approach. So we're going to say post. Uh, we're going to assign to this app DB prepare. We're going to use a prepared statement here now because remember we're taking an ID from the URL uh, we don't want to just plonk that into a query without uh, escaping it properly. So we're going to use a prepared statement. So we're going to select, again, a uh, similar deal. We're going to select posts.star. We're going to concatenate together the user first name with a space and users.lastname. 
and we're going to call that author and we're going to select all this from posts but then we're going to join on, join on our users table so we're going to do a left join on users and that's going to be on the posts user id being the same as our users.id but now we need a where clause because we want to only pick out the post that the user has defined in the URL. So we're going to say where posts.id equals, and then we're going to give a placeholder just here. Now this isn't the same as what we've done up here, so don't confuse this and this. All this is is a PDO placeholder, which we can go ahead and pass in in just a moment when we execute this, which we're going to do just now. So we're going to say post execute, and we pass in a list of uh, things to bind here. So we say post ID. So this is relating to this, remember not this. And we're gonna pass in the post ID that we get from the URL. So all it's doing is basically selecting a post, whichever, uh, whichever post the user's defined in the URL. So now what we want to do is say post, we're gonna reassign fetching this. I'm gonna fetch this again as an associative array. Now, what happens if the post isn't found? Now, at the moment, what we could do is do a var dump on post and then just kill the page. And we can see that if we say post one, we get that first post. Post two, we get that second post. But if it isn't found, so for example, post three, it looks like we've got a bool false on this post variable. So we can actually go ahead and use this to uh, output a 404 if that post isn't found. So all we need here is an if statement to say if not post, we're going to use slims not found method, which is going to go ahead and render a 404 error. So now we can go ahead and render a view, which doesn't exist at the moment, but we'll create it. So I'm going to say it's going to be in views and then a posts folder and then it's going to be show.php. And what do we want to pass through to this? Well, we want to pass our post in. And that's going to be the post just here. So if it's not found, we don't get any further than this. Otherwise, we just render this posts show view. So let's go ahead and in our uh, views folder, create a posts folder, create a new file in here called show.php, and then We'll just say show post for now. So again, a refresh in here, we don't get anything, but if we do post one, show post, post two, show post. So we need to build up this page as well. So let's build up our uh, view for showing a particular post. And this is really easy. So remember, we already have this post variable sent through to this view. So all we really need to do is create, say, an h1, and output post.title and a paragraph to output post body. And then we have our author container again, and we're just gonna say by, and we'll say post to author. And then we can say on, and we can maybe output the created date, so post.created. And then when we go ahead and refresh, we see this. So we can go back again, or back to home. We can click on second post. Oh, well, we can't actually click on it at the moment because we don't have the URLs in place but we can go to the second post, back to the first post, etc. So let's start just tying up uh, the rest of the functionality. And what we need to do is link our uh, post here to our actual first post page. And what we also need to do is on this page, we need to link back home. Now, if you're observant, you would have known that I didn't give this a name. I didn't give this root a name. So we actually need to do that. So down here, again, we use the name method and we say posts.show, that's it. So now that we've got this here, we can, from our home page, so let's just close all of these off and uh, get in a bit better shape with this. So in our home view, we can update our href attribute on our anchor to point to that post. And then on our show page, we can create an anchor up here to say back home. We can do the same here to go back to the home page. So let's start with our home page, which is listing all of our posts. 
Now to do this, we need to use the URL for helper. So I'm outputting something here. So I'm using two curly brackets either side. We have this URL for helper here, which allows us to define uh, building up a URL for a particular named route. So in this case, it's posts.show. Remember that route here has posts.show as its name. So we can go ahead and do this, but that's not gonna be enough because what's gonna happen here is when I click on this, it's going through and giving us the placeholder in the URL that we defined within our posts show route. We need to pass here uh, some options to this so it knows what to replace within that placeholder. So in here we can say post ID, and this is going to be post.id. So all we're doing is we're saying URL for, the first argument being the name of the route, the second being this object with the name of the placeholder here and then the value of the placeholder here. So remember for each loop in this, this is gonna be one and then for the second it's gonna be two or whatever ID you're using. So now when we refresh, we can click on this and go through to the first post. We can click on this and go to the second post, easy as that. And you've probably already worked out that over on our show page, it's just going to be even easier here because we're only going to one route or, or uh, just a static route with no placeholders being passed in. So we just say URL for home, that's it. So when I refresh and I hit click back home, that takes me back and I can just now navigate around. So that is pretty much it for our final product. We've learned uh, a little bit about Slim and how it works. Uh, a really good way to structure your application to keep your roots, which are essentially here acting as controllers to your application. And then we've looked at uh, installing Twig so we can actually render this and output using Twig, which is, I'm sure you'll agree, a little bit cleaner than just using PHP tags. And that is pretty much it. The only thing really to say is that what we've been doing inside of here uh, using these queries is a little bit verbose. It's a little bit annoying. It can't be updated easily. Uh, we've replicated our SQL query pretty much uh, exactly uh, through both of these. So I would rec recommend you go ahead and check out using an ORM like Eloquent, uh, which is really good and it can be easily integrated into your Slim application. This just means you can start to introduce models to your application as well. If you are PSR for auto loading within uh, Composer, this makes it really easy to just easy to just pull in models and go ahead and do whatever you need with them. In this case, post would be a model and would be sorted for both of these. We wouldn't have to replicate the code like it is. But that's a little bit advanced. This was a video just to introduce you into Slim, getting it installed, installing Twig, and creating a very basic blog application.